I'm here with former UFC bantamweight and flyweight champion, Henry Cejudo, the fourth person to ever be the champ champ in the UFC. He takes on Aljamain Sterling at UFC 288 for the bantamweight belt. Al uh, man, it's been almost three years to the day since you've stepped inside of a cage and competed. How are you feeling coming to this one? Um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. We're about, you know, a week and a half out, just about. I've never, these last three years that I haven't competed, um, I feel like it's been the best three years of my life. You know, getting the chance to coach some of the best fighters in the world. Uh, Jones, Demetrius, you know, Davidson Figueredo, John Wei Lee. You know, a, a lot of my inspiration kind of came, a lot of my inspiration came back from actually like getting a chance to like coach them and teach them. And, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I've been gone for about three years, but I've really, I, I've really been gone for two. This last year, that's all I've been doing is just training. And I just feel like this is the best version of myself. And, and I mean that this isn't just for hype, you know, my, my strength, my knowledge, uh, my speed, the, the timing, there's a lot of things that are just clicking for me and, uh, May 6th couldn't come any sooner. Well, let's go back three years. UFC 249 just happened. You've just beaten Dominic Cruz. You, you're the latest champ champ. You're then talking about retiring. Like, why then? Talk, talk me through that. Because I've accomplished everything there is to accomplish. You know, I defended both of my belts in the UFC. I accomplished my lifelong dream of becoming Olympic gold medals as a little kid. I wanted to enjoy life. I wanted to find other avenues and ways to, uh, to make money, to, to make a living. You know, and to allow myself, to allow that rekindle, that love of competition to come back once again. I, I, I once I beat Domino, I'm like, this just isn't, th th there either had to be a huge incentive for me to stay or take the time, and that's just the reality, take my time until my heart and the desire literally comes back. You know, I'm 36 years old now. I don't, I don't regret anything that I've ever done. As a matter of fact, those last three years have been the best three years of my life. Got married, had a kid. And, uh, you know, I, I love the challenge of being counted out. I love the challenge of, be, of, of being counted out. I think that's, that's another part of the reason why I'm even making this to, not to prove to nobody really, but to prove to myself, because I know what I'm capable of doing. So this is just another, uh, this is just another mountain that I got to climb. And I think this is going to be a, I, 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 I like this mountain that I'm getting, I'm getting ready to climb on May 6th. Well, speaking of coming back, obviously, a lot involved with that was your family and going and spending time with them getting married having you know having kids was that a big part of you coming back and and, and coaching being a big part of falling in love with the sport again um no my family is the last people and i tell this to people all the time it's like i'm not doing this for my daughter i'm not doing this for my wife i'm not doing for i'm really not doing it for my family the incentive is the family financially <laughs> but this this is clear this is clear to just make history and and to buy more freedom you know what i'm saying like it's uh i, I even see a lot of these fighters it's just as benjamins like you know i see aljamain Sterling, i see a damn benjamin i see tj dillashaw i see a benjamin and i'm just i'm here to rob the bank and that's just the reality that's that's how i feel and that's what i'm gonna do on may 6 because the uh, aljamain is just not at my level and i love it as a matter of fact the ufc actually you know they they hired me as a hitman to uh, to take this dude out you know, did the UFC want to really give me a title with Shadow? Like, no, but you got, but Henry, stylistically, you're the best matchup and we want him out of here. And I'm like, all right, let me, let me put on my gloves and, uh, you know, let me, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get that job done. Well, speaking of Aljamain Sterling, his last fight was at the end of October. Your six month mandatory testing period in USADA was up at the start of October. Did you want that fight? straight away or are you kind of happy having a little bit more time to you know prepare no i wanted that fight right off the back i wanted that fight because i just uh because yeah man there's no time to waste for me you know like I, i'm plan once i get done with algebra and i'm planning on fighting I'm, pl I'm planning on fighting right right away as soon as possible you know i'm on a mission you know like when i was champion proud of getting hurt like my last three fights it was demetrius johnson tj dillashaw and Marlon Marais all in 10 months, you know, I was, uh, I was an active fighter, but then I got injured with, uh, with, uh, after my Marlon Marais fight that took me out for a whole year. But then 
once I was once you know once the surgeon and once like uh, my physical therapist said I was ready to go like within a few months I was training again and then and then fought so I'm planning on being an active champion and uh, it, and it, it just doesn't stop there you know I want you know my overall goal is Alexander Volkanovsky obviously I cannot overlook Aljamain Sterling but my overall goal is to go up to 145 pounds and uh you know, with all due respect, Megan, is to take him down under and <laughs> and become the and become the C four, you know, the 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 first three division champ in history. <laughs> I absolutely love that. I'm sure that fight would be insane. But Algermain, kind of a wrestler like yourself, obviously different ways Olympic NCAA it can be on paper considered a wrestler versus wrestler matchup. Obviously you both got different skills to add as well. Let's put analyst Henry hat on for a second. What were your initial thoughts on the matchup stylistically? Oh, it's a great matchup for me. It's a, it's a beautiful matchup for me. His his takedowns don't intimidate me. His his entries don't intimidate me. His striking doesn't intimidate me. I can, I think if there's anything that Algermain does, he just takes chances. You know, he's a risk taker. He'll throw a crazy knee. He'll go for a takedown from a mile away. Like, he'll do certain things like that. But when you get somebody with a solid base that understands the game to a whole, like, I, I see myself picking this guy apart. So as an analyst, I think this is uh, I think it's, it's a great matchup for me. You know, I'm going to be able to defend his takedowns. Um, I'm going to be able to keep it on my feet or take him down, you know. I can't, I can't give you guys everything. <laughs> because there is uh, the, there is a game plan, and and I do take game planning extremely serious, you know, to the point where everybody that I'm that I'm fighting with is at his height. Everybody that he's partnered with is a whole lot taller than me. You see what I'm saying? So <laughs> little little things like that that I see, I'm just like, yeah, he's he's planning for the wrong do, you know. And I just think my IQ is just it's just superior to his. Well. When you look at him, it's more about volume and, and speed and movement and his ability to scramble and take the back. Do you feel like you're going to have a power and speed advantage in this one to be able to shut him down? Oh, in every, in every sense of the way. Power, speed, uh, experience, um, grit, technique. I just saw that even just even the looks, dude. I'm just better. I'm just better in every area than this guy. I mean, this guy is, and he knows, man. Algebra knows this isn't like this is like I'm the guy, out of everybody in the whole roster. Whether he wants to say he's gonna put me out in, in, in two rounds or, or I don't deserve it. I don't deserve him. And I, dude, I, 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 I'm letting you babysit my belt. He knows that I'm just the toughest matchup stylistically. And, uh, you know, I, I know he's thinking about me. I, I, know, I know he knows what I'm capable of doing and because I know that, I, I know that I'm going to get the job done and this fight doesn't go past three rounds. Love the confidence. Now, one thing or one term that generally likes to be thrown around when an athlete takes a pretty lengthy layoff and they come back is cage rust or ring rust. Uh, you know, training... The timing and training and timing in a real fight can be very different. Is that something that you have taken into consideration ahead of this one? Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. I've been in these positions before because even in wrestling, I retired for three years. And uh, it's, it's crazy how they parallel. And I came back and I beat the number one, the number two guy in the world. You know, uh, I'm just a competitor at heart. I, I do a lot of simulations here at the here when I'm training. Where I come out to walk on music, where I really simulate the fight where there's an actual referee where we got to get everybody out of there within one minute of the break. So the fight simulation, at the end of the day, Megan, it really doesn't matter because if I sign that contract, I'm, I'm going to show up. I'm going to have to show up. So the ring rust, all that, to me, like, no, that's just, I, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to win. Whether whatever the hell it is that I'm feeling and I'm in really good shape right now. This is this is the best that I've ever felt, man. I, I promise you, in my whole career of actually fighting, this is the best and smartest I have ever felt. And injury-free, uh, mentally strong, the great game plan. Uh, if we have to make adjustments, we'll take them. But this is this is this is the best version you guys will see of myself. And I'm I'm bringing new tricks into this game. 
do you feel like taking these, you know, two or three years off from actively competing has helped with being able to feel the best that you've ever felt? Yeah, of course, of course. The simple fact that I need to, I need to reamp that love. You know what I'm saying? I need to. Yeah. A lot of re, a, a lot of reason why fighters mess up, and I see this a lot. And I, and I, t I spoke to John about it. I kind of explained it to him. I'm like, John, you you stepped away because it gets boring. Like, what else is gonna push you, man? Like, what else is it that you want? That's really gonna satisfy you. If if you fight just out of fight because you're good, but you're not in love, you're not gonna do yourself a favor. Then you're gonna have to split decisions like he was. But if you give yourself time, rekindle that love, understand more of the whys, let everybody else celebrate for a middle, for you know, for a little bit. Be the be the person outside looking in. Oh, okay. And then make your and then and then diagnose whether okay, I could beat that dude. And then once I start to feel that, then I know it's game time. You know what I'm saying? So once I saw Aljamain do that and then do that to this guy, and then like to me, like Academy Award when he beat uh when he beat Jan the first time. I think we all know that. You know, he beat he beat uh, uh TJ Dillashaw with freaking one arm. It took him two rounds, it took me thirty two seconds. You know, he was given he was given that fight with Peter on the second fight via judge's guilt. Like, I'm just I'm not impressed with this dude. I'm not impressed with this dude, but it has nothing to do with Aljamain. I just believe in my skills that much. That's more for you. Right, well, That's more to say. I just, I, I just, yes. I just believe it. I just believe in my skills that much. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fundamentally, uh, I'm fundamentally sound, and I think that's where I, that's where I put all my emphasis. You know, th those small details that everybody tends to overlook. Something as easy as your position. Right. I mean, and that is why you have accomplished everything you kind of have already. And, and we're about to see more, hopefully, coming next week. But one thing that you did kind of take up in your time away from the sport was coaching. Obviously, coaching the likes of Zhang Wei Li, um, Davidson Figueredo. You've done some work, like you mentioned, John Jones. Was that something that you've always been passionate about? No, not really, man. I've always been a selfish prick, like a selfish brat. Like it's always <laughs> been about me. But I think stepping away, because I'm, I'm like people don't understand the level of competitor that I am. Like I won't help if when I'm in the game, I don't help people. I don't. <laughs> I like, love the honesty. I really don't like, like, like I really don't like it's, uh, like yeah, I'll, I'll give my training partners round or whatnot, but I'm not that guy at the gym coaching and helping. But taking these last three years off, once I accomplished everything, I was like, hey, I'm just giving back to every single soul that was in there. You have a question, I'm here to answer it. You want to come over, you want to train. I'm not here to steal any of you guys. I think that's why people like me. I'm just I'm just here to teach my and share my knowledge with you guys and take it how it is. And guess what, Megan, they continue to keep coming back, you know, because because of that. But now that I'm fighting again, like I, I become that once again, I become that competitor where it's all about me. And uh, I enjoyed it, man. Like, it, it, it was something completely new that I wasn't accustomed to because you know, I, I've always shared advice and things like that. But I've always enjoyed that, like you know, when I when I when I wasn't training, but now that uh, now that I'm back to it, it's uh, you know, I I become that competitor again. That's just like, damn, don't cross them. You know, Jordan <laughs> and Kobe were the if, if you study Jordan and Kobe, Kobe, Jordan and Kobe were the same way. Not necessarily had a lot of uh, they they're just all about winning, so. It's been good, man. They've inspired me. I've had a chance to give back. Uh, but I also feel like the gift that I know, even recognizing from them uh, how much I can still give and how is it that I want to win in, win in a fashion that's going to really satisfy me. Is that something that you see yourself doing, you know, more full time once you are done actively competing? No, I'm not a coach. <laughs> I'm not a coach. I'm a, I'm a counselor. I'm a teacher, you know, like I'm, I'm not going to go with you. I'm not going to go to your fight on Saturday unless you're a really close friend of mine or unless you're like John Jones. You right. Know? But I just can't, man. I, I love my family. I, I, I notice a lot of you, even, like even you and being in journalism, like uh, you guys are gone a lot. You know, Daniel Cormier, mm -hmm. he's gone a lot. Like I, I can't sacrifice that stuff for nobody. You know, I was a kid who was raised by a single mother and, uh, 
my biggest fear is not being there for my family, particularly my daughter. So, so no, no, no thank you. I'm a counselor. I'm a teacher. <laughs> you, can, you can, you can, you can come and learn from me and then you can go back wherever it is that you're, uh, you're training at, but I'm here to share knowledge. Right. No, it's definitely the toll so, that so, it takes so, yeah. on young families is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing you've also kind of had a lot of success with as well is your YouTube channel. You post all the fight breakdowns, your analyst type work, behind the scenes content. What prompted you to start, you know, posting a lot of that stuff? Yeah, I think I think I had to bury the cringe. I was trying to go the cringe route and uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was working. I think I was annoying people more than anything. And I'm just like, well, I mean, I still have a little bit of that, but you know, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm just a brain, you know, from my experiences. And I say that humbly, you know, my experience has taught me a lot. I've been able to, I, I've been coached by some of the best in the world. And I just feel like I, I have a lot of knowledge and why not share it to the world, you know? And, uh, you know, I, people, my, my Instagram, my YouTube, like everything's been growing because of, because of that. And that's really what I enjoy doing. Like I've, um, I'm a teacher at heart, you know, I'm not a coach, like, like even teaching this, like if I do too much of teaching, then I'm not, I don't think I'd like it, but it's, it's done just enough where I'm able to have a life and, and yet, you know what I mean? And still give back without getting full of myself either. You know what I'm right. saying? It's that balance. So that, 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 yeah, there's there's that balance now. In success, there really isn't a balance. You know, you're you're here and here, but now that um that I'm back, it goes back to that. But now that once I'm out of the sport again, then that balance comes again. You know, and and, and I probably enjoy that. I enjoy that more than more than winning championships. It's it's just it's it's a simple thing called freedom, and uh, and I love it. All right. Well, one last question before I let you go. Obviously, you have not been shy about talking about going up and fighting Alex Volkanovsky after you fight Aljamain Sterling, UFC 288. For the featherweight belt this time, the C4 will be the first person to ever hold three different weight class belts in the UFC. I know you're big on call outs and, and promos. If you had to cut a promo for a Aljamain Sterling and Alex Volkanovsky right now, what would it be? Al Gislaine Sterling, stay tuned. Now your time is running out. May 6th, she's right around the corner. Go ahead and get your little thong ready, your nice little dress ready, because I'm taking you out first. And then I'm going after Ronald McDonald. That's right, Sean O'Malley. He's next, that dirty Q-tip. And after that, the real gold. Once I get done with you two tune-ups, I'm going. I'm going after Alexander the Average. You know, I want him. I do respect what he's doing. I do respect what he's done. But I also do believe that he's in front of. He's stopping me from making history. To put myself in a category in a position where nobody has ever done. I am the Triple C. I'm looking to become C4. So I, I, I know you respect me, uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. But when that time comes, man, you will see. You will see a different version of myself. And I am shorter than you. But I am faster. I, I'm, I'm, I'm knowledgeable. Um, I have the tools to take you out. So continue to keep winning. Continue to keep babysitting that belt. Because that belt will be mine. Sucker. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, Henry, good luck at UFC 288. Thank you, as always, for your time. Awesome. Thank you, guys.